anyone that uses social media, Twitch or YouTube for gaming content. You will have noticed that this little game that's been spoken about by a lot of different people called Vampire Survivors. And more than likely, those things have been very positive and very nice about this game as it's become a little bit of a phenomenon unto itself. Now, not only has this game captured the imagination of streamers and social media influencers, it's actually become the most played game on Steam Deck, which when you think about it is kind of insane considering it's both an indie title and it's also a new genre. So what is it and why has it become so popular? I'm going to attempt to have a look at that in this video and try and see if I can come up with my own answer to why Vampire Survivors has become such a phenomenon. Well, at its core, Vampire Survivors is basically a roguelike horde survival game that is easy to pick up and play. And it's easy to master simply by progression because over time you'll gain access to power-ups and weapons that will inevitably make you progress further into the game. Summing up the gameplay itself, the only thing I can liken it to is a tower defence game, but the main difference is your character is both the base that you're protecting and all the towers that you would have on the playfield of a tower defence title. Gameplay is as simple as it gets with your only input being movement. That's right, you don't shoot or target enemies, you simply have to survive and let the weapons you pick up do the work for you. So with a gameplay loop that boils down to something as simple as move and survive, why has the game become so popular? Well, the simple answer seems to be rewards and progression. You see, in Vampire Survivors, you're constantly just a few seconds from a level upgrade and with each upgrade comes a new RNG roll of weapons or power-ups to choose from and the game is filled with unique combinations that when lined up correctly will allow your weapons to evolve into what I'm going to call super weapons allowing you to push on further and further unlocking more and more achievements and challenges with the game. When you finally die, you take the gold you earn from that run and you can invest it into power-ups that can be reset. But these power-ups will improve things like speed, damage, health, etc. This is why I say it's kind of got a roguelike element to it. One other factor during gameplay that also tickles the reward centre in your brain is chest drops. While beating mini bosses, you'll see chests that drop that can either reward you with one, three, or five new items. These mini loot boxes can catapult your character build from struggling to take out waves to chewing through hordes in seconds. Now, I feel like that encapsulates what the game is, but what about that has become so popular that developers have raced to pump out games that emulate and sometimes clone the vampire survival formula to what I want to say various degrees of success and why is it so far that no one has quite been able to match or surpass what vampire survivors has brought to the table. <clears throat> so far I've not gone all the way and purchased all of the games trying to emulate vampire survivors but one of the ones I played that I would say does a really good job is Bone Razor Minions. It's probably, for me, the best in a lot of ways because it tries to do its own thing within this genre. Unlike the next game I'm going to speak about, which is a game I've played called Survival Academy. Now this one's fairly new, they're still working on it. Maybe it'll get better over time, who knows? But in a lot of ways, it's trying to straight up copy Vampire Survivors with a lot of the weapons functioning in the same way and they've basically stuck an anime aesthetic over the top of it, tried to add some anime girls but they obviously feel it looks better than the kind of 8-bit style of Vampire Survivors 
But to me, it seems like style over substance because the game itself arguably doesn't look better and it certainly doesn't play better, okay? And at times, the RNG that you get from weapon drops, etc., it just straight up feels rigged where sometimes you're just not going to beat it because you will not get the weapons that you need to move forward. Now, the thing I think that makes Vampire Survivors both great and popular is it never feels impossible. Its simplicity is also layered with a level of fairness that gives you the confidence to just survive as you know that pushing on and gaining that next level of EXP, you're more than likely going to get something that's going to help you survive further into the game until you hit the 30 minute mark and death comes for you. Well, that is until you become an uber beast that can actually defeat death, but that is something that will come later as you play. This is one of my biggest reasons for thinking the game has been successful. The other reason is its developer, Ponsel. This small team, while undoubtedly surprised by the success the game has had, has stayed active with the player base, constantly getting a feel for how players are reacting and pumping out updates and free DLC to make the game even better. When they finally released a bit of paid DLC content called The Legacy of Moonspell, which added a massive new map with lots of new challenges and new characters, the DLC only cost a few bucks and the developers were almost apologetic at the fact that they were doing paid DLC, while the players were responding with comments like, charge more. This just shows you what players think of both the game and the developers. They even brought the game to mobile and did it for free. And they said they didn't want to be predatory in the mobile space. That's why they haven't charged for it. I mean, in my opinion, they should have charged. Even a buck or two, there's nothing predatory about that. Um, but they didn't and Honestly, they've left a lot of money on the table that they could have used to develop more games with this great player-first mindset that they have, but instead they've wanted to give people an experience and a chance to play their game. They want you to play their game, even if you can't afford to buy it. Now this, to me, is a breath of fresh air in the gaming space, and it shows a passion for their project that we as players can feel when we are playing the game and it's likely one of the big reasons why the game has been so successful. But most of all, the reason that I think it's so popular is just what I said before. It's such a simple formula that makes players feel rewarded at every turn, and the reason that these new games in the space are not quite hitting the same highs is because they feel like they have to add something more on top, or they're just going to simply be viewed as a clone. This, the phrase, keep it simple stupid, rings true more than ever here, and I honestly think we probably won't see the biggest evolutions in this new genre until Vampire Survivors 2 inevitably arrives. Who knows if this genre will be a flash in the pan or go on to be a long-term thing, but all I know is I'm enjoying the hell out of Vampire Survivors and I hope to see more games like this in the future. Vampire Survivors is available on Steam, Xbox Game Pass and mobile so really anyone can get their hands on this and I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't already.